Welcome to the Automotive Blockchain Channel, everyone. Hey, I want to say welcome back to those of you that are joining the Automotive Blockchain Channel bus. You know you're already in, you know you're already buckled up and ready to move. But hey, for those of you that are new to the channel, get on in, buckle up. There's plenty of room on the Automotive Blockchain Channel bus. And Love Dub goes out to all of you listening in on this particular session. All right, so here we go. Vietnamese auto car maker. VinFast. Now, I have just did two videos about VinFast, and they're launching their VF8 and their VF9 uh, SUVs. These, this particular um, video here, folks, we're going to be covering over something to do with their batteries. And keep in mind that before we get into this is that the proper sourcing of batteries, meaning the sourcing of the raw materials of the batteries, is extremely important. And that sort of thing is going to be placed on the blockchain. Now, this video isn't necessarily going to be talking specifically about that. It's going to be talking about where the technology is going because the fact of the matter is, is that if you follow where the technology is going, then when you start looking into any of the blockchain or distributed ledger technologies associated with it, then you can start to get an idea of where you may want to invest your money. Now, this is not financial advice of any sort. This is for your infotainment information and research purposes. Uh, definitely do your own research as you as you uh, start to go out there and look to invest into something. So we have here this article, Vietnamese car maker, VinFast, invest in Israeli electric vehicle battery startup. And uh, as we scroll down here, this is back from the 7th of January here. And the VinFast Automotive or Automobile Arm of Vietnam's largest conglomerate, VinGroup, that's the company that is uh, responsible for manufacturing, making, etc., VinFast, has led an 80 million funding round for Israeli electric vehicle battery developer StoreDot. The deal is expected to help VinFast secure fast charging batteries for its own EVs. Keep in mind that, you know, as you're going around and you're driving these vehicles, for those of you that own the Teslas uh, or any of the bolts or anything else like that out there, you understand very well that charging them suckers, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to charge and keep it going because you're trying to do a road trip, it could take a while. So those fast battery charger systems, especially the ones that Tesla's developing, but the, the batteries themselves being able to charge quickly is going to be important. So, StoreDot, all right? StoreDot is backed by a Russian Jewish billionaire, uh, Roman Abram uh, Abramovich. And uh, he will use the funds for research development as well as to boost mass production of the silicon dominant, extremely fast charging battery cells by 2024. So they're really looking forward to pushing this into their batteries to help with that. Uh, I guess you could say that latency in between the car battery running low and then all of a sudden it charging. The other side of that though, that helps with the fast charging battery is that we understand, and I've done a video on this before, is that most of the time the car batteries, uh, that the energy that is there isn't even being used. It's just sitting at your house or it's sitting at your the parking garage at work or whatever it is. So, or at the mall or most people don't go to malls anymore, but you get the idea. Most of the time your car is still and as a result, it has a battery source, a power source, an electric source in it. So having that being tapped back into the grid, and then at the same time, when you're ready to go out and use it, it can be charged back up very quickly is going to be important. So there's a whole gamut of use cases associated with this. That's not just about the charging it for you, the consumer's purposes, but also tapping back into the grid. So Vin, uh, VinFast has cast a wide net um, for with the battery companies in and of themselves. So along with this, VinFast is preparing for its U.S. IPO later this this year amid ambitions to build its American customer base. And as I mentioned before, it is going to be launching the VF8 and the VF9, um, which these are the, the the Vietnamese designations for them. But the VF8 and the VF9 vehicles, and just so you know, the VF9 is going to be about the size of a Jeep Grand Cherokee, and the VF8, or the 35, as you see here on the screen, is going to be something smaller, like, I don't know, like a Chevy Equinox or something like that. It's going to be a slightly smaller vehicle. So that kind of gives you the idea. Now, that being said, we understand that they're investing in, uh, you know, battery companies. But they're also looking to, uh, the maker itself is looking to plan to build a U.S. battery factory. That is right, here in the United States. So the San Francisco um, car maker, VinFast, because that's where they're based out of here in the United States, plans to build an electrical vehicle battery cells and packs, and it's planned in the U.S. manufacturing complex. What they're looking here is they're, they're betting on the U.S. market where it plans to debut affordable electrical sport utility vehicles late in the uh, late this year. Now, they've already debuted that. This is actually uh, kind of a backwards written article, but um, they're trying to release it in the market this year. They, they talked about them. Uh, as of late last year. 
So what they're looking to do is they're trying to build this Gigafactory in the U.S. as well. Uh, so they want to be able to source the batteries. They want to be able to build the vehicles all here in the United States. Now, where do you get those suckers fixed is always the big question. Well, the same thing that applies to your Teslas. You know, where do you get that fixed if something goes wrong with it? So to me, when it comes to a brand new company that's coming in the United States that does not have the uh, the groundwork, the infrastructure, etc., uh, here in the United States, getting people to buy those things uh, is going to be a challenge. And I'm looking forward to see how they overcome that. But anyway, back in December, and that's of 2021, Vin Group said it had started building the battery cell plant in Vietnam so VinFast can own its battery supply chain. It doesn't want that supply chain getting all jacked up in other parts of the world, so it's trying to own that, even though they're uh, doing some outside investments, as you've just heard, over in Israel. So all that is kind of interesting, huh? You're trying to figure out all this all out, but the fact of the matter is, is what if you don't really own every aspect of your VinFast vehicle? What if you don't own it? So in this article here, that's over here from driving.ca, um, and the what they show in here is from Motormouth. VinFast is lowering electric vehicle prices by renting you the battery. <laughs> that is right, folks. You have not heard, you have not read this wrong, renting you the battery. So I want to touch a little bit on this, all right? So it says down here that um, while the U.S. pricing and everything is going to be situated um, somewhere around the Jeep Cherokee, Jeep Cherokee and uh, the, the Ford Edge Equinox uh, kind of side of, of things, when it really boils down to it, the electric motors that you will have, you will own the electric motor, you will own the tires, you will own the wheels, but in fact, you'll own the entire shell of everything inside the cabin and all high techery that goes into running the modern electric autonomous vehicle. Okay, you're going to own all that inside of this vehicle. Some of it's going to be uh, this is a semi uh, autonomous vehicle. You're going to own it all. Okay, the only thing you don't own well is the battery that you rent in perpetuity from VinFast. You hear that, folks? You will rent the battery in perpetuity from VinFast. So they're trying to bring the batteries more than likely back, and then they'll be able to push that out. So what they're thinking about with this sales model, of course, is that it opens up all sorts of questions, not the least which revolve around insurance, liability. If you don't pay the rent and whether this sort of pricing qualifies VinFast e-vehicles for federal and uh, provincial subsidies. But the bottom line is that VinFast's gambit nevertheless remains simple. Will, will will buying only part of the car eventually save you money? And I don't think it's that big of a deal because the fact of the matter is, is most people don't even own their vehicles anyway. Um, the way the insurance laws, at least here in there, are, are written up in the United States, yes, you're paying the bank uh, because they're financing you the ownership of that vehicle, providing that you're not leasing it. Um, and even if you're leasing, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, and if you get into an accident or something happens, fact of the matter is you're responsible for that. And let's say, for instance, that was your Tesla. So you, you know, it is what it is. If you're leasing the vehicle and you're leasing your Tesla or leasing your electric vehicle, you know, technically you really, you're just leasing it. You're not having the option to buy it. If you don't want to, you turn it back in and it goes to back to the dealership, back to the manufacturer, back to the bank. All right. So that's really what happens. I think these batteries are going to fall all on the same lines of that. Um, you know, now the interesting part is, is that once you paid your vehicle off, and the vehicle is now owned by you, you have the title, you technically don't have the title for the battery. So will they be charging a rental fee for renting the battery month in and month out as time goes by uh, and you're charging that? Will it be uh, something which you could tap back into on the grid? Um, this is all very interesting parts of that. So they're going to be working that out as time goes by. I look forward to seeing how that works out. Um, one thing to know for sure is that you don't have that problem with the ICE engines, but the ICE engines are going away. Hey everyone, let me know what you think of this video. I look forward to seeing you next time on the Automotive Blockchain Channel.